I'm going to ask one question on the city because John really wants to focus on Sterling. There's the city. There's this comedy of Reaganomics Redux as well. How does the city, as an international venue, how does it move forward? How does it survive as the global institution? So uh, this is a really important question, Tom, and I think with all the debate around the announcements that were made in the last couple of days, um, there is um, much more support for the city. Uh, something as simple as removing the uh, banker's uh, bonus caps, which, as you know, was gamed by the banks and put the U.K. banks at a significant competitive disadvantage to the U.S. banks. Uh, any support for the city right now is, uh, is important. But well, what else would you like to see from this government to bring that kind of enthusiasm back to the city that I think was lost for many people after the Brexit vote? You know, I think right now credibility is is the key. And, and uh, you know, Simon French said this morning that the only currency that Simon French from Panmore Gordon, the only currency that really matters <clears throat> in the UK macro right now is credibility. Um, and I think the the announcement earlier today, which I saw in the Bloomberg headlines, which is that the chancellor is going to spend time with the banks and, and the traders and distributors of the, of the gilt market is important. So I think step one is, is, uh, is credibility. Jonathan, if you put this in context, we had a, you know, $150 billion debt-financed energy policy um, without really preparing the gilt market um, for what was coming in terms of issuance. And I think people talk about the currency uh, crisis. I think this was more a crisis in the gilt market than it was in the currency market. Well, can you talk a little bit more about what some of those moves in rates would mean for a big bank running a large mortgage book? We saw certain banks remove certain products in the last 24 hours. You, of course, had to oversee a large mortgage book over at Barclays in your time running that bank. But well, can you tell me what you'd have to do when you see rates move this quickly, this fast, and expectations for the Bank of England climb as quickly as they have done? Well, if you put it in context, Jonathan, the two-year gilt um, as, recently as, uh, as recently as August was about 1.5%. You know, right now it's about four and a quarter. I think it touched four and a half in the last couple of days. So to your point, that's a sizable, sizable move. Um, that kind of volatility is not necessarily bad for banks, particularly banks with investment banking operations such as Barclays. But it, what it will do is it will really slow down the issuance of any new mortgages. So the mortgage books, in terms of new issuance, um, you know, it's going to be, uh, as you said, there was the announcement that a number of banks have really kind of closed their mortgage issuance. Bob, it's also going to slow down the economy dramatically. What are you expecting in terms of a downturn, a potential response uh, from uh, England, given that the fiscal tool is kind of being blown up and the Bank of England kind of has to push back? So let's keep it in context. I talked about you know, I think the communications and the credibility around announcing $150 billion debt-financed energy policy, we talked about those issues. But the other things that were announced, there's some good things in there. I think, I think the announcement around both corporate and personal taxes, um, keeping corporate taxes at 19 percent or lowering them 19 percent rather than raising them to 25 percent, puts the U.K. in a credible position amongst its peers. Um, I think announcing some easing of immigration to, to ease uh, the labor supply issues. Uh, I think some of the things that were announced around kind of infrastructure or reducing the bureaucracy to be able to get to building uh, around infrastructure and around housing. So keep it, keeping it in context, there were some positive things that were announced within this. And I think because of the shock to the debt markets, to the gilt markets, we really have to find a way to hold the hands of the markets until late November when the budget is announced and we really get to look at what, what is meant here by the medium and long-term fiscal program. And somehow we have, to, we have to manage our way through these markets. And I think the chancellor meeting with the banks today and over the next couple of days um, is a positive step in that direction. Do you see some opportunities then? Absolutely. Where are they, Bob? Um, within the gilt market? Within... Within sterling denominated assets more broadly. Take your pick. Well, look, look, Jonathan, I want to put that in context as well. People have talked about um, the currency crisis. The move from 130 down to where the currency is right now has really been about the dollar, the dollar, the dollar. 
So the, the, the UK currency is down maybe 25 or 30 percent. The dollar is up 20 percent against every currency in the world. So we need to keep that in context.